Right, everyone will have to kind of forgive me because I'm just going to quickly record um, getting the car into Unreal. Now, I haven't done this before. So I'm going to, so I'm going to oops, so I'm going to post up on YouTube. That's going to give me because I just got home after a, a very long day and I'm going to try and record it now. I'm at home, so family things might happen in the background. Family things are bedtimes, children crying, um, ambient sounds of people singing, maybe the odd rude word, depending on how well behaved my children are, and my son Gable popping in because he really wants to be a YouTuber. So, so first of all, uh, I've got Mayor open now. Uh, this is Mayor 2017 because my system hasn't got enough space yet to put 2018 on and I just haven't got around to it. It's week three. I just haven't got around to it. Uh, the same thing with, with UE4. And if you have a look at UE4, I'm on 4.18. But I know these two things are kind of stable. So, so I'm just going to kind of dive right in. UE4 is just booting up in the background. So we've got Maya, obviously. Look. There we go. So we've got Maya. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of putting in what I call the cheese car. I haven't done this for a couple of years, um, but I'm just going to explain the ins and outs because it is quite a convoluted process. So what we're going to do is first of all build the car in Maya, um, but I'm going to set up Maya so that Unreal looks at it and just goes, yeah, that's what it is. I'm going to put the bones in myself. Um, then we're going to get the car, put it into UE4. Then I'm going to get what's called a pawn class, put the car in there so it sees the bones and it knows that it's got front, two front wheels, which steer, and two back wheels, which just spin. The two front wheels spin as well. Then... Uh, I'm going to connect it to an input. Let's put that to one side. I'm going to connect it to an input um, so I can use the game's controller. I could use the keys, but I'm trying to be quite quick here. And um, we're just going to mess about and get it working. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. So, first of all, I'm sorry for not posting for a while. Um, UAD fill and all that. Um, so I'm just going to first of all build the cheese car. So there's going to be a lot of pausing, unpausing, but it takes a little bit of time, and I want to keep this relatively, relatively short. Right. Um, so what I've got here is I've got the basic cheese car, and it's called a cheese car because it looks like a piece of cheese. So I'm just baking some wheels, and I'm just just ramming up the polys in there. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, so. For all those who don't know, um, to select, basically just go around and selecting an edge, double clicking on that edge, selects that edge and just going up there and beveling it. It's cheap, it's cheerful, I know, but I'm going to be looking at this god awful car for a while so it's going to have a few bevels on it. It's not going to be that sharp cheese. It's mature cheddar. Right, so I've grabbed grab this and I've got, as my students will know, I've got the fill shelf here so keep things clean and neat so I'll grab the trees car itself and I'm going to uh, freeze transforms and delete the history and the same thing with the wheel, even though I'm going to have to move the wheel now and freeze the transforms um, so I'm rotating Z by 90 and move this fella over here, like so. Oh, it's a beautiful car. I've never seen a car. If, if this car was available on the market, I would buy it. So I'm just going to take that wheel down a bit because it's it's beautiful that way. There. Oh, it's a bit more of a racing cheese car that way. Okay, that'll be fine. So again, freeze the history. So. Yeah, so I'm going to duplicate that. Just control D, duplicate that. Put that, oh, look at that, on the pedigree. Uh, and again, freeze the transforms on that. 
it's really, really important that you do do things like deleting the history all the way through. Um, so I'm just going to mirror this ge geometry over to this side and start naming. You know what I said about Maya being stable? 2017. It's just died. So just give me a second. Cheese car shall rise again. So we have the cheese car back. And what I'm going to do again is go to put this safe this time. So freeze transforms and delete history. Rotate the dear thing by 90 degrees. Got the snap on. Control D to duplicate. So we have our cheese car. And what a beautiful car it is. So with these freeze transforms and I'll delete all history. So we're gonna grab this. Mesh, and then I'm going to mirror, and it's in X. I'm not going to put an offset on it. I'll just get it to offset of 10 or 110. 10. Oh, it keeps doing that. It's because I've got ge geometry. Control Z. It keeps doing that. It's because it's cut geometry. I want to copy it, I don't want to cut the geometry. So, uh, mirror it. There we go. Well, oh, I was lucky. Um, mirror that one as well. I'm going to pull that in. These two. Oh, I, think I, I don't want it the same piece of geometry, you idiot. Right, hang on a second, I just saw this. The trouble is with this combine with original, I don't want to combine them. So I'm just going to mirror them. Should be two separate objects now. And just did the same with that fella. I'm going to just grab those two and move them in a little bit. So they're about right. And then again, freeze, transforms, and history. And I'm going to save this sod. Yeah, student version of my own, blah, blah, blah. So there we have our cheese car. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, um, I'm going to go for the sporty cheese car, I think. So I'm going to pull this in a little bit and down like that. Wow. So it's, it's the cheese car. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the preferences so if you go to settings of preferences whoa, preferences yeah we need to have the Z the practice the Z up and we also need to have this car pointing down the positive z-axis. So if we just grab this, what I'm doing, going to do, I'm going to grab it all, I'm just going to put it in a group for a second, and I'm just going to put it where it should be, do, 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 do. 10 by 90, there we go. And I'm going to put it on this grid. So it's. So it should be pointing down this way. So I still need to rotate it about Z. You think that's rotated about Y, but it isn't. It's rotated about Z. And it's so that we four and Maya can be friends.
Okay, so the cheese cart is in the right place now and it's ready for me to put some bones in it. Now we only want a bone in here, in the main part of the car, and a bone in the centre of each of these wheels. We want everything named properly. Now everybody, you have your own naming conventions, but I save it as well. I can hear my computer going, because I'm only on a laptop. And it's a Lenovo laptop. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, put the bones in, rename everything, and then show you when it's done. Right, so at the moment now I've got the main car, so I've renamed it Car Body Geo. Car Body Geo. Uh, left rear wheel Geo. Left front rear wheel Geo. Right front rear wheel Geo. And right rear wheel wheel Geo. It, it doesn't actually matter about this. I've just been kind of pernickety because really what we're going to be doing is the bones are going to be skinned to these bits of geo and we're going to work with the bones so we're going to be pulling the bones really and it's associated kind of deformer cluster which includes the geo into UE4 so that's the next thing I'm going to do um, so it's, it's, it's fairly simple what I've done for some reason these things are bright green um, and it went a little bit odd, but that's Maya for you. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a bit embarrassing at times. So I've got to stop now and uh, go and wash my kids. So I'll be back in 15, 20 minutes when they're put to bed. Right, so the next bit is to create the joints. So I've just gone up to skeleton, create joints. And here you see it's the tiniest little joint in the world. Oh, isn't it cute? Right, to sort that out, because that happens all the time, sort it out. If you go into display, animation, joint size, and you can set it up to be a big joint, bigger joint. All right, I've got a feeling that this car is going to be huge. If it is, we'll just have to adjust, adjust the scaling. So what we'll do is we'll just ping these joints to each wheel and one in the middle. So basically I've got a joint in each wheel and I've put a joint right in the centre of the car. There. So the next thing I've done is I've just selected this joint 5 which is the parent I'm going to rename these in a second and selected the other joints and just parented them so it's um, shift. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically select the two joints press P and it parents them. The thick, the thick end should have been the joint at the, at the top and the thin end pointed towards the bone at the bottom. So what I've done next is I've made all the joints and named them. So I've got the body joint. I'm careful to stick to the naming convention of JNT. The left front joint, left rear joint, right rear joint and right front joint. And it should look like that. If you want to kind of see it in all its glory, click on X-ray joints. And that's approximately what it should look like. All the joints should be at the centre of the wheels, unless you want very eccentric wheels. Um, and that's why when I made the wheels, I made them with this nice metal cap vert. So it sticks there. Right, so this basically concludes the bit from Maya. The next bit is to export it as an FBX. FBX is kind of like a wonder format. It's called FBX from Filmbox, which was an Autodesk product, and it was really good. It was I used it for motion capture way, way, way back at the University of Worcester. Sorry, I'm a slip of tea. And um, it's called Filmbox, so the file format is FBX. So they still use that, and what it does is it exports everything animations, bones, mesh, the lot. And it's really good. And we're going to be using it later for the character, but here we're going to be using it for the car. So I'll just pause it again, um, and then we'll get on. I'm only pausing it so I can have a slurp of tea in peace. The kids are in bed. Oh dear me, no. Oh, I forgot the, the next stage. The last stage in Maya is to skin the geometry to the bones. So 
as I say to my students, and I'm, as I put it on YouTube, saying to everybody, skinning is a deformer, it's a skin deformer, skin cluster, which is bottled up here in the outline, and skin clusters are very, very sensitive to deleting the history. If you delete the history, then you get rid of all the deformers, and that includes blend shapes and skin clusters. So you've got non-deformer history, and I've got it up here on my shelf, I think that's it. Uh, Yes, non-deformer history, it says NH up on the shelf. And remember, the short, key board shortcut to putting stuff on the shelf is shift, is control and shift while clicking whatever it is. It'll appear on your shelf, in this case, fill shelf. The, the funny thing is that when you do that, um, it doesn't actually perform the action until you click it when it's on the shelf. It's, it's just, I suppose that's a good thing to do. Anyway, I'll, I'll do that now. Um, it involves p painting skin weight, so I'll just set that up. So what I'll do is I've selected everything. Then you go to skin, bind skin. Now, I always take the maximum influences, in this case, will be to one. And unclick maintain mass, ma bleh, max influences. In this case, it should work fine. Then what you do is you grab these bits, and you go to the Paint Skin Weights tool, and it should be nice and sensible and do that kind of thing, where that bone is 100% influenced to this. I'm just going to keep this over to one side. And again, I'm going to go to the Paint Skin Weights tool. And sometimes it does this, and it is very very annoying it's very this is the easy way sod the skin weights tool I'm working with quite a low poly model here so I'm going to grab these verts without grabbing this is this is one thing the bones oh the layers oh, layers and bones so what I'm going to do is this this helps um, an awful lot so I'm going to create two layers and this here I'm going to put on layer 1. I'm going to add those selected objects to there. So you've got the skin clusters there. I'm going to turn the visibility off because that is a pain in the arse. Right, um, it's our swing. We're going to grab these verts here and you go to Windows, General Editor, Component Editor. And if you go at the top you'll see smooth skins there. And you can just check whether that is attached to the body joint, which it is for some insane reason, or the the bone that it's supposed to. And at the moment it's all attached to the bone. So I really want that on the body joint. So what I'm gonna do, I don't know whether this that has worked before. I'm going to reduce that to 0.5. It should fish out. No, it doesn't fish out. And it's disappeared. Look at that. Right, I'm going to have to sort this out. I think I've made a rookie mistake. So what I think's happened, I'm, I'm keeping this in. I could redo the whole video, but I'm keeping this in because this is what sometimes happens. Right, when you select a bone, when you select a bone, so the body joint, I'll, I'll make it visible again. You hear, oh yeah, it looks as if you've got all these other joints, but in reality you haven't. It just shows you the dependency. You've got to select all those joints, so I need to take that skin cluster off. And the best way to take a skin cluster off is non deform history. Hear my girls laughing in the other room. So I'm going to go non deformer history. That gets rid of the skin cluster, get rid of the second outliner. And what I'll do is select all the joints, make sure you've got all the joints. Then select all this geo. I thought it was too good to be true. And skin, bind skin. I've already set it up. Interactive bind skin. I haven't tried this one and this one yet, I'm going to try it. 
Oh. What? Right rear real GA was already connected to a screen cluster. How, how the hell did that happen? Because it deleted all the history. Skin. Let's go by skin. Car body Jews are connected to a skin cluster. There's a skin cluster there. How did that survive? It should die. Okay, I was using non deformed history, wasn't I? I was trying to prove my own point. Right. Because you guys must think I'm some kind of duffer. It's been a long day. It's been a very long day. So, select everything. So I've got everything. And then I'm going to go skin, bind skin. Yeah, bind skin. There we go. Now, why not I go to skin mates tool? Let's have a look. Now these, the these bits here, the wheels, they should be bound to their respective joints. So let's just go in and check that that's happening. So at the moment, it's selected all to body joint. So, what we've got here is all the bindings. So this wheel here, I want it all to be on that joint, that joint and that geo. So this is that geo, and it should all be on the, the right rear. So we we'll press here on the right rear. And it's almost there anyway. So let's change that all to one. So that should now follow. I think should follow that. I'll do it here. And grab all these verts. Modify. It's Windows. General Editor. Component Editor. And this is the front. This is the right front. Select them all. And just change them all to one. Well, not 14, one. Not 11, one. There we go, right front. Okay. Same thing with this one, this one here. Grab them all. This is the left rear. It's almost all there. It's been bit of a pen this one in the rear. So select them all. So everything just says left rear. That's it. Grab this fella here. Verts. Grab all those verts. Uh, Windows, general editor, component editor. You'll be doing this with this with the character soon enough. So this is the left front. You may, you may notice I paused the video um, a bit, and that's because when I did the skin bind skin, I put that up. Put, I was trying to be clever and put that one. If I put it to five, it puts the joints on. And that's one bad thing about making, doing smooth skins like this, is that um, what happens. Let's go to the top. What can happen? is it's actually very difficult to add influence of joints. Um, you can take them away, it's very easy to take them away, but um, it's, it's also a pain in the ass to add them. I'm just going to go to Component Editor. So now, that should be fine, so I'm just going to save that. So now that should be set up for me. So I'm going to export this as an FBX uh, and then I'm going to call it a day because I'm very, very tired. Um, 
and the next couple of days I'm going to post the next video I'm putting it into UB4. I've done the notes, the notes are going to be going up so you, you guys can look at them and pop and go yeah I know approximately what I'm going to do. Um, but um, I'm going to be adding to this um, and going through it and you should be happy with what we're doing. So to check it's on positive x, yet yeah, y, y is across, z is up. So you are going to love it. The wheels are bound to the, the bones um, and the bones are ready to sort out. Let's just check. I'm just grabbing this bone. I'm going to rotate it. And the wheel rotates. Nothing else rotates. I'm not going to play around with those rotations because I want to keep it nice and clean. But it's, it's nice and clean. It looks lovely. Right, I'm going to call that a day. Um, and uh, chill out with my cup of tea and think about the next thing I'm going to do. Okay? Um, I hope you have a, a good night and I'll see you all, all tomorrow or if you're on YouTube and you're looking at the videos um, I'll see you in the next video